Hello everyone, welcome to MTD Global. Today I have the great honor to be at Flying S. And typically there's a lot of secrets here and there's no cameras allowed in the door. However, thanks to Ben, Pete, Penny, and some other amazing people here at Flying S, they've allowed MTD to come in. Today, we get to discuss the Matt Sura machine that we're standing in front of, how the optimization, the palette changer, and all of the flexibility of what's going on here, the simplicity of use, how it was able to affect in a very positive way the manufacturing process here at Flying S. And today I get to learn a bit more from Ben. So Ben, welcome to MTD. Thanks, Tony, I appreciate it. You are the expert when it comes to this factory here. And so many cool machines, but you have a great story about the Matt Suras themselves, don't you? So we had seen several of your videos, um, MTD videos especially, and basically anything that we could glean off of off of YouTube, off the internet, for, for learning about Matsura. Um, it was on a very short list with a couple other machine manufacturer competitors, um, but ultimately we went with Matsura because they, they stick with what they're good at. You know, they have this um, high mix, low volume, awesome palletized system, um, the accuracy of the machine, the smoothness of motion, and the ease of use really led us to, to make the decision to buy Matsura. Uh, before, we didn't really have much automation, uh, so we spent a lot of time and uh, a lot of effort in tweaking and, and getting all of the accuracy out of our um, other machine manufacturers. Um, we were able to, in a very short order, replace, uh, not replace the people, but reassign the people to different um, important other aspects of, of what we do, um, and just replace the man hours that it took to create the number of parts that we've made uh, automated here with the Matsura. Um, whereas before, we were uh, sort of struggling to get first part right off the bat, um, had some accuracy issues, we'd have to maybe move some features in Mastercam or, or, or tweak some offsets to get things to, to be exactly right with some of the, the space and flight parts that we make. Um, but really we found that with the Matsura, if it's set up right, it just runs right. Uh, the blends are incredible, the uh, surface finish is really nice. Um, if you want a hole put here, it puts it exactly there. So it's a, it's a really, really nice piece of equipment. Well, Ben, you touched on a lot of topics, so let's try and break them down individually and go over them a little bit more in detail for our audience, because if I'm watching this right now, I was like, wow, that's amazing. How do I do that, too? How do yeah. I become a part of that? Yeah, so, good point. Let's talk a little bit about when you first got this machine, was there any fear involved? And, and if there was or was not, over time, did it lessen or did you just expect it to be amazing right from the beginning? Right. Uh, there was some fear at first. Of course, with a different brand, you wonder about um, how the uh, user interface is and how friendly the control is to learn um, and basically how friendly the machine is to operate. Uh, but we found within um, the first few days of training that it was just, it's a really friendly um, user interface. Um, the palletized system um, can be can be staged and operational while the machine's running, so that allows for a lot of flexibility. Um, and the fact that you can schedule different pallets for completely different programs, it's not a, it's not a dummy system that runs four of the same thing. Just what you can see here is four separate part numbers um, in different various stages of their creation. So um, it really kind of showcases the flexibility and the power of, of, of the palletized system and Matsura in general. Well, flexibility is key. We found that to be true. I know you guys really value flexibility, return on investment, that type of thing. When we're talking about this pallet changer and the machine is running right now, I think you've already mentioned it, but I just want to reconvey that information. We can open this door. We can take out a part. We can put a new part in. As you said, it's not a dummy machine. You can run separate projects continuously. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and in fact, whenever we have a shorter batch run, um, we can, um, as it gets, as one gets shuttled out of the machine that's just complete and it loads another block, if you allow the, um, the pallet changer time to load the pallet, then um, opening the door, scheduling new pallets, loading a new block, and flagging in as ready, is, uh, it takes just a few minutes and the machine can just run continuously. It's really powerful. And how easy is that? I believe you told it's me. very easy, yeah. I've come in on weekends with my five-year-old son. 
Um, and if we had an entire pallet station full of finished pallets, I can have him specifically call each station up to the load station. Uh, we load and torque new blocks, flag them as ready, and then position them for, uh, for, the, for the next round. So it's, it's very user friendly. Well, granted, you are pretty much a whiz when it comes to this machine, but you're somewhat saying if a five-year-old can do it, so can I. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty easy for him. It's a really simplistic layout, but it's really sophisticated in its own right. Uh, there's a lot of control here um, with just the few buttons that's on specifically on the pallet station. Um, you can also call up pallets on the, uh, on the Matsura interface as well. Um, but yeah, this is uh, it's pretty simplistic. Am I mistaken in, I believe what I read was these two Matsura machines that you guys invested in was able to replace the amount of output from five other of the, another machine that you guys are trying to run now lights out versus constantly loading and reloading. Could, could you go into a bit more detail about that? Yeah, that's true. Um, the, the other machines weren't automated um, and just sort of depending on cycle time, it, it really affected whether we were able to have an entire night's worth of runtime or it, it, you know, um, the runtime during the day really affected productivity at night. Um, with Matsura, we're obviously able, even if it's running at the end of the day, to load at least three more stations and gain a lot of cycle time after hours, which um, is a big deal. Without having to come in later to load blocks for a hot job, or um, without having to work an insane amount of hours, we're able to get the same, if not more, productivity out of just a palletized station, um, whereas we were to have to load several machines um, previously for that but same output. Ben, something I find to be fairly inspiring is that Flying S really values families. And so you guys don't run a second shift and a third shift because they want you guys to go home and spend time with your families. I'd imagine the flexibility of the Matt Sura being able to run lights out has helped you not only accomplish the product output that you want, but also getting to spend time with your families while doing more. Yeah, absolutely. As I mentioned, Miles likes to come in and look around, but after eight hours, not that it's a bad place to be, but you'd rather be home with your kids, with your wife. Um, so yeah, the, the, the productivity this, this machine allows you and, and uh, the 850 allows you also, is um, it, it really pays dividends more than just in business. You mentioned Sometimes it was difficult to get a one-off previously, but because of the precision of the Matt Sura machine, you guys are really able to you know, set up a project or a product and get that thing out the door because you know that the precision and the accuracy is there on the Matt Sura. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, stick out, still stick out, deflection, still deflection. But if you can control your parameters and control those things, which um, with, by this sleek spindle design, you don't need near the amount of gauge length, near the amount of stick out you did previously. Um, however, you, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, inspection would ask us to tweak certain uh, uh, datum structures to allow features to be within position. We would have to get parts back that we'd already manufactured, set them up, and take a small amount of material off of specific datums to make those parts work. Um, a Matt, uh, Matt Sura has, has really, um, I believe it's 90%, if not more, of the parts we've loaded in, we've been able to get a successful first part off. Um, another thing I'd mention is, is that um, now the machine itself has not scrapped the parts since install. We have scrapped parts on this machine, but it's been all operator or user error, all setup error. Um, it's never been because the machine has physically put something where it's not supposed to be or cut it the wrong size without having the wrong offset. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. So you mentioned when this thing first came in, it being a new machine, right? But you very quickly were able to gain the confidence that you needed to really create the output that you were looking to do. That's right. Who was your service and support for all of that training? Yeah, great question. Uh, Yamazin Service and Support um, out of Northern Illinois. They did a, a, a fantastic job. If I could give a shout out to a guy named Matt Gartner. He's a great trainer, a really great guy to work with. Uh, really put our minds to ease. I personally and um, the guy that was training with me had only run two different machine manufacturers before um, and mainly for uh, 10 or so years I'd only run one and that was one control interface so a bit of my hesitation initially was because oh man you know this is a new control this is supposed to be a very sophisticated machine am I going to have the chops to run this machine right um, 
but within a few days and um, some really basic training from Matt um, and the guys at Yamas and we were able to, to, to dial in um, and run apart and get really comfortable with, with tool length offsets, with probing, with uh, scheduling the pallet system and really gain a lot of confidence quickly in uh, the operation of Matsura. How quickly would you say that that fear kind of dissipated on this new machine with a brand new control yeah. had you been running you know, something else your entire life, right? Yeah. That's what you knew. So how quickly did that fear dissipate for you? Yeah, it sounds like a story, but really within the first couple of days, once, wow. you, once you see how user-friendly the interface is, it really puts your mind at ease. It's, it's really nice. So Ben, let's talk a little bit about the machine spindle uptime. What, what have you guys been able to accomplish? So this machine, um, having only been here for this first seven months of install, we'd already put uh, with weekend runtime, with night runtime, we'd already put over um, over the amount of hours that we had had on our uh, longest existing five-axis machine, which is um, has been I think since 2015 we'd owned that machine, um, and this machine has already surpassed it. It's hold on, hold on. More Let me a interrupt year. real quick. Yeah. You're telling me. That within seven months, you put the same amount of hours on this machine as you did on something for five years? Yeah, absolutely. The, not just the amount of spindle hours, but likely more than the amount of output as well. Because we're running way more complex parts in this machine than we were able to even on the machine with, with uh, at the time, more hours. So, wow. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. I'm somewhat dumbfounded at the moment because yeah. those numbers are so significant. Yeah, so this is, uh, in that amount of time, Roughly 2,000 parts with an average batch size of seven. So um, it's a lot of changeovers, a lot of um, inspection time. Um, but with the flexibility of the pallet station, we're able to take some finished parts to inspection while starting another project um, and be able to go from one work order right into the next. I talk a lot about the importance of rigidity, and rigidity needs to go from the machine spindle all the way through your tool holder, your, your work holding, your table itself. It sounds to me like, in comparison to that type of topic, the flexibility, understanding the machine, the training that you got along with it, the fact of how precise it is, not needing to double check parts over and over again, is the same type of streamlined process when you're talking about how quickly I can get parts out and how much the machine spindle runs and the importance of each component <clears throat> separately adding up to make one great product. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned rigidity. I mean, you can tell by the, just the construction of the machine uh, how much thought is put into the actual, the actual construction itself. It's a really sturdy, really strong machine. Um, all of the axes are built well. The, uh, the, the rotary, both rotaries are right over the x-axis, so there's, there's inherent rigid um, construction there. Um, and I think that does play a lot into how reliable the machine is and how uh, well we were able to do right off the bat. It's truly, I mean, I keep saying these really positive adjectives, incredible, amazing, inspired, but it's, it's a fact. It's right? true, like yeah. Your story is one that everyone should know and decide if this is something they want to implement in their facility as well because it's worked so well for you guys. Absolutely, yeah. It's worked right out of the gate. I was, I was very impressed with the service we were getting. Um, and just with the machines in general, they they're really are amazing, as you, as you said. There we go again, right? Yeah, really, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Camplete. Okay. Yeah, Camplete's a great comfort, man. Um, we were able to get Camplete with this machine, an exact machine model here, so that uh, you can model your holders, uh, position your part in space, and tell before you even get to the control if you're going to have any kind of close encounters with the table or any collisions. Uh, of course, we don't want any any um, any gouges, anything like that. But Camplete's able to tell you that really quickly. Um, it's it's really user friendly as well. Um, and again, it, it took a minute to get used to that, but but with um, some good training from Yamazan, it was just a couple of days. I were able to to post start off Camplete um, very easily. It's a sort of a combination of um, of a post processor and machine verification software that allows you to see if you've got any collisions, any potential scary parts, anything like that. So very comforting whenever you're running a, a high-end machine like this. Well, Ben, I really appreciate you sharing your story with MTD, with the world. Matt Sura uh, is an incredible product. I know you guys don't really let cameras inside, so I feel honored to be here. And for the first time holding a microphone on camera, you have done an amazing <laughs> job, my friend. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Yeah, it's great to have you guys here. I'm really glad to showcase Matsura 
Uh, those guys are amazing. They make a, a really great product. I appreciate you coming.